Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India They return to Bollywood again, but in a different aspect. We are now going to look at the globalization of Bollywood song and dance. Not dance parties, but the globalization of Bollywood song and dance. Uh, before we look at how Bollywood song and dance got globalized, let us understand what is the function of song and dance in the Hindi film or in the Bollywood film. We, uh, most people have described uh, Bollywood films or Hindi films as musicals and as uh, films as six song and six songs and a dance because the in Bollywood formula is to have uh, includes songs and dances uh, as part of his uh, melodramatic grammar. Songs and dances have been an integral part of the Hind of Hindi cinema since the coming of talkies. The first song, De uh, De Khuda Ke Naam, since that song was sung, songs and dances, not dances, dances came later, but songs have been an inevitable part of Hindi films and they have multiple uses in Indian films. Now, Indian films are not, Hindi film is not a, new, not a musical in the western sense, but song and dance are an integral part of Hindi cinema. A part which is a source of infinite pleasure for the South Indian, South Asian audience and the uh, lovers of uh, Hindi films and songs who were confined to South Asians who could follow the language until recently and uh, we are talking about listeners and lovers of Hindi film songs not only in India but in the rest of South Asia testified by the popularity of radio programs like Binaka, Keith Mala launched from Radio Ceylon which drew, which drew requests which received requests from listeners not only in India but from Pakistan and particularly after the banning of Indian films in a formal uh, s s banning the formal screening of Indian films in Pakistan, the song became Pakistani audiences sole connection with Hindi films and one finds a generation of uh, audience in Pakistan, film goers in Pakistan particularly the pre-independence, uh, those who were born before independence still, still humming songs from old Indian films as to listeners from other parts of South Asia. A new phenomena was noted in the 1990s or some time after the mid 80s when song and dance began to be, uh, be heard as well as non-South Asian audience as well. Uh, but until then, they were viewed by non-South non Asian audience as interrupting the flow of action and uh, irritating breaks in the, in the diegetic uh, narrative of the film. For this reason, uh, Lalita Gopalan in her book, Cinema of Interruptions, uh, uh, named the title of uh, her book, uh, named the, called her book Cinema of Interruptions, but uh, offered a very brilliant analysis of the song and dance sequence in terms of the grammar of Indian cinema, which he said was a, a, as a grammar of interruptions, which interruptions which were part of the narrative technique of Hindi cinema. So, and song and dance are one of the main interruptions. Song and dance, this heritage of song and dance goes back to Indian food performing arts and if one watches an Indian play or even listens to a traditional Indian storytelling, 
one finds that it is interrupted and uh, it is interrupted by uh, parts of the story or uh, songs which either comment on action or form provide a narrative uh, relief to the audience who has been watching a play or listening to the story and often in, uh, in the traditional context they are an invitation to the audience to join in. So, this tradition dates back to the Indian performing arts particularly storytelling and theatre in also in kathas and dastans and since we, uh, we have been told that Hindi films have derived from one of the greatest influences of Hindi films is Parsi theatre. Uh, uh, which included songs and dances, performances of songs and dances, uh, Hindi films have retained that structure. Now, what is the function of song and dance in a traditional performance? Let us first look at that. The song and dance sequence in a traditional performance allows the narrator to pause for breath. It also provides relief to the audience. It is used, sometimes it is used for reciting narrative portions for instance if there is a big, uh, big uh, time lag between two events usually it is filled in by the narration of, of that part of the narrative quickly in a short in a brief song which offers an interlude. The, there are other kinds of songs which, uh, which serve as a choric commentary on action and another uh, yet another kind of song creates a mood and the fourth kind of the final variety of song is used for expressing emotion. Now, uh, with the we will see that the same function which the song not so much dance, but the song performed in traditional performing arts is carried over in, in Indian cinema in which it is used for more or less the same purpose for breaking the monotony of the action for providing relief for com for offering a commentary for expressing emotions and so on now in parsi theater the presence of the song is courtesy the migration of talent migration of talent including singers dancers musicians and poets with the loss of the royal with the with the collapse of the court of aud and the loss of the royal patronage system the talent from the hereditary performers of Lucknow or Awadh were forced to migrate to Mumbai or Bombay where the film industry was located. Uh, this is before the coming of the film industry sorry. They migrated to become part of to take part in Parsi theatre and they became leading figures in the Parsi theatre. Now, in Parsi theatre the plot was divided by song and uh, dance and often included singing stars and it also co-opted reigning poets of the time in not only writing the scripts, but also the lyrics. For this reason Hindi films till this date have the category of a lyricist who composes the songs of the film and many of these lyricists were well known figures in the past, well known poets in the past and can some of these poets uh, leading Urdu poets continue to be part of the film industry even today. Now, the same function as we saw setting a mood, express, expressing emotion, offering commentary on the action, also offering social commentary is carried over into in the Hindi film song and dance, but as opposed to the understanding that it breaks the continuity or unity of action. Uh, if we were to look at it carefully, it is carefully integrated into the narrative of the se section and it can also be independent of the narrative. Now, in the earlier denunciations of Hindi cinema, this any song and dance which was not integrated into the narrative was seen as breaking its unity and its flaw and uh, particularly the songs which were independent of the narrative came in for sharp criticism, but it is these songs which are independent of the narrative and which often provide um, a relief in the narrative or are used to showcase the dancing skills of the 
uh, actors particularly, the female actors or our expression of our fantasies expressing emotions which are which actors are not forbid are not permitted to express in real life the hidden fantasies which are uh, picturized uh, through a song and dance sequence it also offers filmmakers to migrate overseas to shoot so song and dance sequences in exotic settings it used to be Kashmir earlier and now they moved to Switzerland and all the most beautiful parts of the world to show to shoot these song and dance sequences which often don't part um, play much uh, role in the narrative per se so uh, now uh, Sudipto Kabiraj the historian has offered a very interesting uh, analysis of the importance of song and dance in Hindi cinema and uh, he confesses that as a Bengali, now the Bengalis had a uh, elitist uh, attitude toward com towards commercial Hindi cinema and tended to look down on Hindi cinema and like most Bengalis of his generation, Kaviraj confesses to not having watched uh, Hindi film because he lived in a small place where Hindi films were not easily accessible but he was familiar with all the film songs from Hindi films which were transmitted which were disseminated aired on All India Radio and uh, having heard these songs in his growing up years he recalls that uh, he analyzes the songs uh, he re re of the films of the 50s and the 60s to say that many of these songs were compositions of highly talented poets. These songs often existed independent of narrative but when we read them together they provide a narrative of modernity. Uh, now this is, uh, this is a technique which the Hindi film seems to have borrowed from a Persian Arabic genre called Dastan uh, and a technique of uh, da Dastan Rukna or stalling the action in, in whose function was to delight the audience through linguistic virtuosity and the most important function of Dastan Rokna was the expression of husno ish or beauty and love. Now, uh, some of the most talented poets uh, of the 20th, Urdu poets of the 20th century have lent their talents to uh, lyrics of Hindi film songs, such as this song by Shakin Badayani, which is one of the most exquisite ex articulations of Husnu Ishq, where he calls the beloved Ayudamun, Chaudhvi ka chand ho, ya aftab ho, jubi ho tum, khuda ki kasam la jawab ho. Let's listen to the song. I would like you to listen to the song because uh, um, I'd like to show how the transition uh, takes place in Hindi films uh, gradually. Let's listen to the song. In expressing his uh, desire and uh, singing the praises of the beloved, and uh, this the same etiquette is uh, preserved in the uh, f other films until the eighties, uh, almost until the eighties, where uh, now the the in in the Hindi film song we have shades of Urdu love poetry, which is about love, and it's not a love poem in the Western sense when um, in, in this song for instance where the lover entreats spring to shower flowers on his as his beloved had arrived. Evocation rather than description is the rule of the Hindi film song as in the Urdu love poem and let us listen to this iconic song from by Sahir Ludhyanvi, the legendary poet who was also a lyricist from the film kabhi kabhi to see the how the etiquette of Hindi films of the expression of Hindi films has changed since the 80s uh, since the 70s. Much ever you must be enjoying the number the, from the Amitabh Bachchan and Rakhi film to see how the whole uh, etiquette of singing the praises of the beloved which was modeled in the 
idiom of Sufi poetry, which has a uh, which has a lexicalized stereotype metaphors and archetypes that are decoded as recognized pairs such as Shama, Parvana, Jam, Saki, Ashik, Mashuka and so on. In Sufi poetry, love or ishq is compared to fire which burns down uh, everything except the object of desire expressed through a butterfly swirling around a light which symbolizes the lover's heart, the ashik's heart who circles around the lover and the Shama and Parvana pair predictively occur in the Hindi film song time and again. The lover's face, fate is to suffer and the beloved's is to cause suffering in Sufi poetry. The metaphor that is reiterated in Hindi cinema is that of kisi par marna, to die for someone, kisi par jaan dena or to extol a love in which the lover lo loves the beloved more than his own self and this carries on even in a film like Fana, Chan Sifarish. Let's listen to the song. the idiom of Hindi cinema change. When does it change and how does it change? Let us look at that. Now, so far until the 60s, uh, the Hindi cinema followed the Udhri code of love, which allows only an oblique expression of love and dancing is still not the norm in Hindi film song, except in folk numbers which are cannibalized in Hindi cinema from the, from the very beginning and the function of folk, uh, folk songs is not only to provide uh, relief uh, or to dem demonstrate the virtuosity of the dancers, many of the female actors were dancing stars, but also to get the heroine out of the traditional outfit of sari and get her into more interesting outfits and uh, make the middle class heroine behave in a more uh, more liberated manner because the as opposed to the middle class heroine, the working classes and particularly the, the, the village uh, women were more liberated but particularly during the song and dance sequences. So, many of the films of the 70s cannibalized these folk tunes, Punjabi tunes, Rajasthani tunes, tunes from UP such as Jhoot Bole Kawa Kate or Dil Se um, in Silsila, another um, folk tune, the Bige Chunarwali and finally, we had Madhuri Dikshit dancing to Choli Ke Piche in uh, her film Kal Kalnayak, which was a big rage and which gave, uh, with this was born what is called item number, which has always been there, but the term item number came to be used. I am giving you this history of Hindi film and song and its movement to dance and the increasing importance of dance in the new films, uh, not in the Bollywood films, but even earlier with, uh, with the films in the 80s. Uh, earlier with, uh, with the birth of the dancing star, in fact, with the birth of the dancing star Shami Kapoor, that films used to, the Hindi film hero began to dance and had dancing skills and the heroines were always tra trained dancers including Madhuri Dikshit and they were made to perform, uh, they, they were asked to in uh, dance sequences, they could let go of the middle class inhibitions and start dancing and uh, we find that uh, it is with uh, these films that gradually, now with uh, in the 90s we find a sea change and once again we have uh, this iconic song which is again a Sufi number in, in which Rajasthani uh, gypsy dancers are dancing on top of a train with Shah Rukh Khan dancing with them which became a hit. Now, it is around this time when dance became not only important in Hindi films and most of these are folk dancers from different parts of India, but, uh, but even wedding songs like um, wedding song like uh, Mahi Ve in Kate is being used as an item number in this film. But the, the, the incursion of Bhangra in Bollywood which began with Mrityu Data and that incursion becomes complete it becomes completely, completely integrated into the Bollywood cinematic grammar by the, by the turn of the century by which every, every film must have a song, must have a Bhangra dance, Bhangra number 
such as the everybody say shava shava number and kabhi khushi kabhi gham and um, nachu baliye so every film uh, had to have a uh, dance number and this trend really began with the jungli hero shami kapoor uh, now uh, how did this song and dance get globalized that has a different history it starts with again uh, with it starts with the remix culture in bali uh, in uk and we will start with the first remix by which was the original song and the remixed which started the tr the trend for bollywood dancing in the diaspora through uh, an album which featured this song and dance from a 70s film remixed in uk it was this is the original number and let's listen listen to bali sagu mix uh this was the remix by bali sagu in the chura move on quickly to how this creates a taste for uh, bollywood dancing in the diasporas so let's go to any club in any bollywood night in uh, i can take you to dj rekha's club night bollywood nights this is in new york city and see what happens in these nights so this is uh, bollywood non stop party there's so many parties so i can take you to any of the parties you'd like to visit there's so many parties happening all over the world uh i would like to take you to a real party rather than the albums uh there were so many the role these parties perform in the in new york city okay So let's look at Bollywood flash. Uh, uh, Germans dancing to uh, Bollywood and beyond in the Bollywood and Beyond festival in Germany. Let's look at some Bollywood dancing there by German women. okay so this is um this is not at the dance festival this is not the christmas party i take you to a more um uh, okay let's take you to a flash mob in germany dancers in the bollywood uh, song and dance sequence uh in in an now uh, uh, this it's in the space of the item number the dance number that you can see the bodies of white dancers are equally integrated into the uh into the item number or to the song and dance number in almost every uh, uh, bollywood film and this kind of recognizes that dance culture the popularity of bollywood dance and song in an average ladies and gentlemen we'll conclude in dance schedule uh, by including instead of extras as they did in the past uh white 
women usually, but.